welcome to our fourth series of a video blog from Lana Electronics. And today we are looking at a, a different use case uh, beyond uh, Universal CPE and Virtual CPE or SD1. Today we want to focus on uh, on the aggregation point, mainly uh, around the v VPNG or Virtual Broadband Network Gateway. And with that, I have a guest speaker from a company called NetElastic. And uh, um, they are uh, a software partner from Lana Electronics building solutions around um, uh, Visual BNG. And uh, David Williams is with us today. Uh, he will be um, explaining a little bit more about you know, what NetElastic does, what's the differentiator and what's so special of the company. So David, can you run us through uh, a few introduction on NetElastic and who you are and what's the aim of the company? So um, why would um, service provider virtualize? What's the aim for that? Well, there's, there's a number of drivers that carriers are looking to virtualization to help them solve. And uh, the first one's really agility. You know, with, with all the changes in network utilization over the past several years, with video growing 400% by 2022, uh, the move after the pandemic to uh, remote learning, uh, video conferencing for our meetings, work from home, the, the network is going through lots of changes and carriers need to be able to adjust to those changes very quickly. And that's really what uh, agility is all about, being able to respond to those network changes, maintain and improve the experience for their subscriber base, and be able to, to launch new services more quickly. Uh, the other part of it is flexibility. By separating the network functionality that they need, how they deploy routers and where they deploy routers, and separate that need from the hardware that they need to acquire. It, it gives them a lot more flexibility, it saves them money and time, and it gives them the ability to, to move functionality around their network down the road should they need to. Those, those are a couple of reasons. The, the last one is really just operational simplicity. Be able to automate um, network routing capabilities throughout the network in a software-defined manner allows them to respond in automated fashions or at least very quickly when those needs change over time. It also allows you know, more of a unified management uh, of the entire environment. So we will be basically um, untangle the, uh, the lock-in mechanism to uh, purpose-built appliances, right? Yeah, it really does. And uh, when we think about purpose-built appliances, we also refer to them as PNFs, or physical network functions. And in that environment, you a carrier is typically going to look at uh, their current need and what they're going to need five years from now, right? Because they don't want to go through a forklift upgrade every six months as the, that segment of the network changes. So they're probably going to have to invest, you know, well above uh, what they currently need, just so they don't have to do that forklift upgrade. Right. Because hardware-based appliances are fixed function and fixed capacity. Unlike a virtualized solution, where the carrier can deploy it on white box servers, uh, so it frees them from having to, you know, make a uh, lock-in decision with a particular legacy router vendor, uh, they can use white box servers, they can deploy any number of workloads uh, that may be required for their service. It just gives them that uh, flexible capacity because they can, can 
consume more resources of a particular compute platform. They can horizontally scale the software functionality as their network grows in that area. And it also allows them to make much more of a precise investment decision for a particular city or town and respond quickly if those change over time. So where would you foresee this deployed in the network? Well, so we run on a number of Lanner platforms. So the Lanner white box platform offers a variety of sizes and scales for different use cases. Everything from a very small desktop type appliance that can run our software. Maybe that would be for an MDU or a medium or larger platform that would be used for maybe a town, city, more of a larger pop, if you will, all the way up to the Mac HTCA platform that allows massive scale with tremendous growth capability without ever having to change the platform itself. So in what type of subscriber sites you would see that different platform? So really anywhere from, say, less than 1,000 on the smaller platform all the way up to hundreds of thousands on the largest platform. In the medium and large, we see probably anywhere from, say, 10 to 50,000 subscribers on those platforms. Of course, it depends on the bandwidth requirements that the carrier is deploying. If they've got a legacy DSL network, those bandwidth speeds are fairly low. So you can get a lot of subscribers within a small amount of bandwidth. If it's a fiber to the home carrier, which is what we predominantly work with and see, you're probably looking at that 10 to 30, 40,000 subscribers. And that's why carriers are moving this functionality closer to the edge. They want smaller densities. They want to be able to improve the quality of service. But they have the flexibility to go much, much larger than that. Right. And then as a use case, where in the network do you foresee this deployment? So in the traditional networks, and carriers are evolving beyond that, they would deploy it in a centralized data center. And they would backhaul all of their subscriber layer 2 traffic, bring it into the IP network at some central data center serving a number of cities. But today we're seeing carriers, large and small, push all of that functionality closer to the customer. Right. So it's an edge central office now that has the B&G functionality that allows the subscriber to get in and on to the IP network where they can, you know, access all of the content, services, and all of that. We're also seeing carriers go to even closer to the customer edge where they may deploy a smaller B&G instance, because again, it's all software, even directly in an MDU. Right. So now they can provide streaming services, voice over IP gateway services, and any other type of service very, very close to the customer, improving, you know, lower latency, improving the fault domain, and improving the overall experience for their subscriber base. Yeah. So Universal CP and SD1 is really booming now. It's picking up. It was unforeseeable. There was a steady growth, but I think with COVID-19, this is going to be increasing very rapidly. I think scalability is a big aspect here. So how would you foresee scalability in the network? Yeah, that's a great point. And in fact, you know, some of the carriers, the larger carriers, published some numbers about the impact of, you know, COVID-19 on their networks, where they were seeing, you know, 50 to 100 percent capacity growth for services like, you know, remote learning, video conferencing, and other important tools that people had to now shift to home in their residential networks instead of their business network. So being able to scale is a, you know, really important factor as carriers evolve their networks. And the, you know, MEC platform is an ideal example of a platform with the built-in switching capability and compute network capability to handle that scale, starting small and eventually, you know, scaling up without having to replace the hardware platform. And in the meantime, 
been able to have enough resources to, you know, deliver other types of workloads and services directly on the same platform. So it's a very interesting platform that I think will, you know, have a lot of unique use cases because of that scaling capability. Yeah. So, and yeah, I mean, that's the driver, right? So I think we will see in the next couple of months and even in 2021, a big increase on the subscriber number and SD1 and universal CP. And the white box is really, I think, that's the way moving forward. The white box model where multiple network functions residing on the same physical hardware. I mean, it can also introduce security in the same appliance. So that's great. So where can people find out more about the VBNG? Yeah, so, you know, we've got a YouTube channel that has some video demos. But the best place to start is really our website, which is netelastic.com. On our site, there's additional product information, white papers, additional, you know, links to our YouTube channel for demonstrations, a lot of information. And that's a great place to start. Yeah, and we've been working together also on some of the projects. So it would be great to, you know, provide more solutions together with NetElastic to the market. So, David, thank you very much for the time and efforts to give us the insights about NetElastic and the vision. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. We appreciate the collaboration and always enjoy chatting with you. Excellent. Thank you very much, David. All right. Take care. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.